In this problem we have a uniform rod of length 2 L meters. This is the uniform rod here and it has a weight of W newtons and is roughly hinged to a vertical wall at this end here and is kept horizontally in place by a 3 L meter light extensible string. This is the light inextensible string here. Light meaning it has no weight and inextensible meaning that the string will not stretch due to the tension. There is also a weight hanging at the other end of the uniform rod of magnitude 3W. The light inextensible string is attached to the rod at L over 2 or a half L meters from this end and also the other end of the light inextensible string is attached to the vertical wall at this point here. The tasks required are to calculate in terms of W firstly the tension in the string Secondly, the magnitude of the reaction force of the hinge on the rod. Part C is to calculate the angle to the horizontal of the reaction force. And part D to calculate the exact coefficient of friction of the hinge. To solve this type of problem, it is required to create this diagram here with all the relevant lengths, angles and forces that are present to be put onto the diagram. So here the weight of the rod, as it is uniform, the weight W will act halfway along the length of the rod. Since the rod is a length of 2 L meters from A the weight of the rod W will act at a distance L from A. So on the other side, between the weight and the 3W is also L. If to find this length here, which is the length along the rod where the light inextensible string is attached to the rod here the whole rod is length 2L take away a half L gives you one and a half L which is as a fraction 3 over 2L the length of the light inextensible string we are told is 3L so here is the length of the light inextensible string the other forces present are the tension in the light inextensible string which is here denoted by T and is acting, is acting upwards as shown by this arrow here. There is also since the hinge is a rough hinge there will be a normal reaction perpendicular to the vertical wall which is denoted by R and also a frictional force which I have denoted by S. At this point it is not known in which direction the frictional force actually acts. It could be upwards as in this case or it could be vertically downwards. I have decided to put the frictional force acting vertically upwards. So then on the diagram all the forces are, are now all present. The next thing to do would be to find this angle here. The angle that the light inextensible string makes with the horizontal rod. You can do this by forming this right angle triangle here and finding the angle theta. So cos theta will be the adjacent which is 3 over 2L over the hypotenuse which is 3L. 
the L's will cancel to give cos theta equals one half. So theta, the angle itself, will be the inverse cos of a half, which works out to be 60 degrees. This angle, 60 degrees, can now be put into the diagram here. The next thing to do would be to find the actual tension in a light inextensible string. To accomplish this, it is required to take moments about point A. This symbol here is the symbol for taking moments and inside that symbol is the point at which you are taking moments about, which in this case is A. Now here I have written the equation for taking a moment. The, a moment is worked out by the force times the perpendicular distance from the point at which you are taking the moment about, which in this case is point A. So looking at this diagram again, here is the tension and this dashed line here is the perpendicular distance of the force, the tension, from the point which I'm taking a moment about, which is this case point A. The distance here is 3 over 2L and this angle is 60 degrees. So the dashed line is the opposite side to the angle. So we have the opposite and the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle which is denoted by sine. So this dashed line here, which is in fact the perpendicular distance required, will be this distance, 3 over 2L, times the sine of this angle, which is given here as 3 over 2L sine 60. So taking moments about A for the tension gives T times the perpendicular distance, 3 over 2L, sine 60 degrees. The, the tension would actually create an anti-clockwise moment because if you pulled in this direction the rod would try to rotate upwards in this direction which would form an anti-clockwise moment and this must be balanced by any clockwise moments that are present so that the, whole, the, the uniform rod itself will keep horizontal. So looking at this diagram, the weight of the rod which acts in the centre of the rod would try to pull the rod down in this direction. So this weight W would create in effect a clockwise moment of magnitude force W times the perpendicular distance from point A which is L and that is given by this bracket here. There is also the hanging weight of magnitude 3W newtons acting at the end of the rod so the moment of this force about A would be the force itself 3W times this distance here the perpendicular distance from A, which is in fact the length of the rod, which is 2L, given by this bracket here. So, sine 60 is actually root 3 over 2. We have WL here, and this simplifies to 6WL. So, cancelling throughout by L and rearranging gives the tension in the light inextensible string as 28 over 3 root 3 W. This root 3 underneath really should be got rid of by what we call rationalising the denominator by multiplying the actual fraction by top and bottom root 3 over root 3. So the actual tension in terms of W is given by 28 over 9 root 3 
W newtons. Before the um, before resolving horizontally and vertically, this diagram here will need to be created. The tension, as we have seen, is acting in this direction at 60 degrees to the horizontal. So the tension has to be resolved into a horizontal component, which in this case is T cos 60. It is cos 60 because this is the adjacent and this is the hypotenuse. And the vertical component of the tension is given by T sine 60. Sine 60 because this side is the opposite and this side is the hypotenuse. So resolving horizontally, this is a double arrow because the rod is not moving to the right or to the left. So to the right, the only horizontal force acting is this force here, which is the normal reaction at the hinge, which is R. And this must be balanced by the horizontal component of the tension which is T cos 60. So this gives us the tension which is here times cos 60 which is a half and this simplifies to the normal reaction at the hinge as 14 over 9 root 3 W newtons. Now resolving vertically, again this is a double arrow because the rod is not moving upwards or downwards. The vertical force which is acting vertically upwards is S here and there is also a vertical component of the tension acting vertically upwards which is T sine 60 as given here. So the sum of these two forces must be equal to any forces acting vertically downwards and there are two W plus 3W which gives 4W. So rearranging this equation and making S the subject gives this. Simplifying gives this 4 take away 14 over 3 gives minus 2 thirds W. Now the interesting point here is this minus sign. The negative or minus sign indicates that S is in fact pointing in the opposite direction. So S is in fact actually pointing vertically downwards. The frictional force at the rough hinge is actually pointing vertically downwards of a magnitude of two thirds W. Now we have found R and S we are able to find the reaction force at the rough hinge which I have denoted by RF. So creating this force triangle here we have a horizontal force acting which is R and a downward force acting which is S of two thirds W. Using Pythagoras' theorem over here, we can find the actual magnitude of the reaction force. And having got this fraction here, rationalize the uh, denominator by, multi by multiplying again by top and bottom of root three and that simplifies to a reaction force of magnitude 4 ninths root 39 W newtons. Because force is a vector quantity as well as the magnitude it is also required to find the direction or in this case the angle. So I have let the angle that the reaction force is making to the horizontal as angle alpha. So alpha equals inverse tan because the opposite is 2 thirds W and the adjacent is R which is 4 over 9 root 3 W 
simplifying this the W's conveniently cancel inverse tan of this fraction gives an angle of 13.9 degrees below the horizontal so this needs to be stated whether this is below or above the horizontal finally the frictional force is given by this simple equation here frictional force equals mu r where mu is the coefficient of friction so rearranging this equation mu the coefficient of friction equals the frictional force over the normal reaction now as i stated earlier s is in fact the frictional force which is two thirds w r the normal reaction at the hinge is 14 over 9 root 3 w the w's cancel again we have this fraction rationalize it by multiplying the top and bottom by root 3 gives the coefficient of friction at the hinge of root 3 over 7